is February 25th, 2020. Um, it's a, I realize I say um a lot when I'm watching my videos, so I'm going to stop that so you don't have to hear that anymore or less. So we are on day four. Tomorrow will be my next dose, and I'm going to do quarter tablet, 62.5 milligrams. Nothing new to report, uh, but I want to give you a little bit of the backstory. Uh, healthy guy. Um, I'm doing it again. I'm saying, um, stop it. So healthy guy moved back from overseas about six and a half years, seven years ago now. Was eating pretty well, working out, getting up early, doing a lot to stay and get healthy. And things were going good. I was doing CrossFit at like 5 o'clock in the morning pretty much every day. But I had a lot of stress going on. Had a baby born with Down syndrome in the ICU. Didn't have a stable job at the time. And was working ER shifts overnight, trying to get a new business off the ground, looking for a place to live, a lot of stuff that you can imagine happening when you move overseas back to the United States after being gone for five years. So stressful in retrospect. Around that time, I was at my parents' house at a cookout, and they have a guy who stays behind them, stayed behind them in collected exotic animals, specifically deer. We were having a cookout one night, and the next morning, as far as I can remember, I woke up and on my right shin, I had a tick attached on there. It was a Lone Star tick, the ones with the white spot on them, and pulled it off. It probably had been on there for several hours, probably, and that spot didn't show a bullseye rash, which is, rash, which is common. Uh, the rash is only apparent in about 50% of 50 of cases of Lyme disease get the bullseye rash. But it was real red and itchy and raised for a long time, like weeks, really. And I showed it to a few people, and I probably, in retrospect, certainly underappreciated that tick bite. I didn't do anything. And for felt decent for a while but not long after that my wife told me i just started feeling almost looking depressed like something was going on just um different mood and not feeling well but i did not make the connection a few several weeks later i went to a class reunion for med school in little rock had a hamburger and a beer and then went back to my hotel room and I woke up in the middle of the night, like two in the morning, having a severe hives, abdominal pain, shortness of breath, obviously an allergic reaction. I was able to get some Benadryl and calm it down. It scared me a pretty good bit. The next morning I was mentioning it to some classmates and one of the ladies overheard me and said she was an allergist and said, you have alpha gal. I said, what's that? She said, well, it's where you're allergic to red meat. Did you know, uh, I think John Grisham or somebody has that. And so I looked it up and I said, well, that's funny. I'm not allergic to red meat. I have red meat all the time. In fact, I had red meat a couple more times after that and did okay. But I had another allergic reaction and um, was sure, because it was after a bowl of like red beef and spaghetti sauce. So. My wife's calling. Just a second. Sorry. Pause. Hey there. Oh, I'll call. Oh, I better call her. If your wife calls, pick up. Okay, where was I? Um, okay, she said, you have alpha gal. I said, I, I eat red meat all the time, but um, 
I had some more ground beef, I think with some spaghetti sauce, and then ended up in the ER after a pretty monster allergic reaction. After that, I felt decent. I mean, I was a little anxious about the fact that I couldn't eat red meat and was worried about contamination, but I still worked out and I worked in ER shifts and just was more careful about what I was eating. But again, in retrospect, I feel like my energy was waning. I was having some anxiety that's atypical for me. And that all just continued to sort of go downhill. And then I remember one day being outside weeding um, it was Thanksgiving, I think, and I just felt like I got hit by a ton of bricks. Just could not do anything. It was like, bam. It's like, I got to lay down. I thought I had the flu or something, but didn't have a fever or anything else. Um, drug myself over to my family's for Thanksgiving, and I just kind of sat on the couch the whole time. Didn't feel like doing anything. Uh, and that kind of went up and down for a little while. And finally, I mean, my wife and I were looking up things and we're like, could this be related to the tick bite? You know, because I'd been starting to see patients who had a similar story and I was wondering. So I called a good friend of mine, Jill Carnahan. She's a really awesome functional medicine doc that you need to be paying attention to if you're not. And I told her the story and what had happened. And she was like, Darren, you have got Lyme disease, dude. Um, so it was nice to have that confirmation. I ran some tests through some labs, hygienics, um, and really pointed to the fact that that's what was going on. Um, then Jill referred me over to a really good friend of hers, Dr. Julie Barter, who's my Lyme doc. She's awesome. And, um, she's kind of been helping me through this journey. So, that's all for now. I will give you more details as we go. I don't want to bore anybody with this, but we'll, we, there's a lot more to the story. But we got many more days to go of disulfiram, right? So day four, tomorrow I'm going to take another dose and I'll give you an update. I'm starting to expect some symptoms. Oh, cool thing. Today and yesterday I was looking up disulfiram because I had heard it had some antiviral activity and one of my patients was mentioning he didn't want to be on disulfiram uh, in case he was exposed to coronavirus and I said well you might want to be on disulfiram so I looked it up and I saw some articles online where several years ago they did some studies where it, they showed that disulfiram was actually active against this little piece of the protein essentially in coronavirus so I looked up the article emailed it to uh, Dr. Uh, James Lyons Wilder who's just a brilliant dude and asked him if this could be true and he's been emailing me we've been emailing back and forth for most of the day just about this so hey disulfiram could be effective against coronavirus um, again this isn't treatment advice but I'm just saying I'll, if I can figure out how to do it, I'm learning YouTube, you'll see me get better over time. I'll try to attach the article reference to somewhere in the comments or something, the de description. Um, so, hey, thank you for watching. I appreciate your patience with me as I figure out technology. Not a great YouTube technology guy, but we're getting there. You'll see it get better, I promise. Um, hey, so, um, so will you like it? And then if you subscribe, I think you'll get um, notifications when new ones come out. Like I said, I'm trying to do it every day. Uh, and then share. And if you write comments, I'll do my best to um, get back to you on those if I can. I'm not a Facebook guy much right now. I know the Disulfram group on Facebook's um, awesome. Awesome. Uh, um, so I posted my initial one there, but I don't, I'm not going to clog up the feed with a bunch of posts every single day um, so if maybe a couple will show up there once in a while but if people there want to watch this send them over to YouTube it's pretty easy to find this I believe so take care end of day four I will see y'all tomorrow